Okay, so the three archetypes that we're going to talk about. So I was thinking about like, I had promised we were going to talk about money mindset, which is a thing that I work with a lot for the reasons I just explained, because I feel like it's critical for our spiritual growth to get this squared away. Um, and so we're going to talk about three of the th three of the ways of looking at the world that can influence our relationship with this flow. Um, and now is a great time. <laughs> Earlier was a better time. That was a great time to say, if you don't have one handy, you're going to want to grab a notebook and pen. So we're just going to do really brief little writing prompts so you can see how these things show up for you. Um, so if you don't have a notebook and pen, go nab that, please. Um, so our three things we're going to talk about. So the witch. I made a calculated decision to use this word in a body talk presentation <laughs> because I know how much we're trying to not be associated with witchcraft. Um, and yet the fact is that we're influenced by that, by this archetype. If we do this kind of work, particularly if we want to get paid to do the kind of, and that's where, that's what we're on here for. Like if we want to do this kind of work for a living of sitting down, talking to people's innate wisdom and helping their bodies to heal, there are people currently out there in the world that call that witchcraft. And I know that because I've, it's been said to me, <laughs> I'm sure I'm not alone in that. And it's what it really boils down to is that there's, um, we do work that not everybody understands. We do powerful work that not everybody understands. And there's a history in Western culture of when people doing powerful healing work that other people don't understand and that being a problem. And so I'm calling, this is the witch. This is what we're going to talk about. Um, I'm, I'm going to guess that most of us are educated enough to know that the witches that were burned were mostly herbalists and midwives and healers, beer brewers, uh, people that were doing um, beneficial things for the culture and someone, some other authority came along, didn't like it and vilified it and they with, with terrible consequences. So we still are reeling from the effects of that. And that does affect it's many people when they go out to start a, a, a career doing alternative work. Okay. So we're just going to bring, this whole thing is about bringing things to awareness, bringing it to the light. Okay. Um, the merchant is our relationship with capitalism, um, which is d hard to unpack. I mean, we swim in capital. Uh, every, I mean, if you're if you're on Zoom right now, you probably live in a capitalist culture, and like it's just kind of how we function. You know, this is that's the structure in which we do all this exchanging of goods and and resources and all this kind of stuff. And there's pros to it and there's cons to it. Um, but what we're going to look at is an archetype is how this affects us as far as like this, these ideas about business and what it means to sell things and what it means to work hard and what it means to have a business and what it means to be successful. We're really, um, we can have those ideas, unexamined ideas kind of rattling around in there, um, impacting us. So we're going to, we're going to investigate that. We'll unpack that a little bit. And then the third one I see showing up. This one I see a lot in active memory. Like I do a, this one a lot. I work with a lot of people. The, the clients who come to me um, tend to be um, alternative type. A lot of people that come to see me are, tend to be healers themselves, artists themselves, you know, alternative -y type of people. Um, and this, the monk, what I see the most in this monk archetype is when people need to clear their vow of poverty. And the monk archetype is this idea that if you're going to do healing work, it should be a, you should never ask anything for it. It should just be free because it comes from God. And B, um, if you're, and if you're going to do this kind of healing, these are just ideas, really, <laughs> these are ideas, but there's this idea that if you're going to be a person who's channeling spirit on a regular basis, that you should be set apart, that you should be austere, that you should be have a tiny little life so that your whole life is just dedicated to this one thing, like this, this total, total dedication to nothing but your work and, and no other part of life available to you is the monk archetype. And, um, for the, um, 
I was going to, well, all right, I'll just finish this thought. I happen to be on board with the idea of a past life. And frankly, I think that I've done the monk thing. <laughs> I feel like I've already spent a lifetime or two just sitting alone, chanting all day long. I don't need to do that this time. I get to go buy shoes. So these are the uh, three archetypes that we're going to be talking about. Oops. Boom. So I'm going to move our little guy over here. So Let's unpack these a little bit. And then after we've unpacked and we've made you all feel candy wampus. <laughs> I mean, I can already feel the energy rising just talking about this stuff. This is a scary stuff. Like this is why we're talking about this because everybody thinks they want money. And of course we do. So why don't we have it? And, the, and or why don't we have enough of it? Or why does it come and go? Or why do we have a bunch and then none and then a bunch and then none? Or we get it and then something happens to the car. Like, all of these, those are all energetic patterns because there's something in the way. And these are some of the things that are in the way. So let's talk about the witch and how it's showing up maybe for you. So this is um, momentarily, we'll grab our pencils. But the effect of having these shadow ideas that maybe you do work that people aren't going to cotton to. Maybe you do work that somewhere in your ancestral line, people actually have been killed for, burned for, tortured for. Maybe you have an ancestral line where people were driven out of town, kicked out of the village because they did healing work that someone else didn't understand. So that can come up and you go to be like, okay, I do this awesome thing. I took this class. I'm great. I'm certified. And then you're like, yeah, but I don't really want to tell anybody about it. I think I'm just going to, eh, I'm just going to keep this on the down low. Maybe I'll wait until the right opportunity comes. Maybe I'll just, I'll wait until the, my higher power or the great spirit sends somebody to me. <laughs> that can be what the witch wound looks like because uh, that's actually, that's a kind of a, a catchphrase that some people use the witch wound because so many women, especially alternative type creative women um, do have this, do carry this. So let's look and see how this might show up for you. And if it rings any of your bells, and if none of these ring your bells, then congratulations, you are evolved. Um, I can tell you that every single one of these has, I have rung all of these bells. <laughs> so, so the witch here, this, I, this um, archetype, grab your pencil here and let's just boop. Let's just see what comes out. You have these skills that people don't even get. Like we're still working on how to talk about it. All right. So, and then maybe somebody's not going to like it. So having skills that the authorities, whoever that is, that don't understand makes me what? I'll actually fill it out too. We're just going to do this quick. I know what I do. I know how powerful it is. I know how much it changes lives, but I can't talk to who about what I do. Who can I not talk to about it? they won't understand they'll think it's ridiculous etc cetera, etc cetera. can't i can't talk to blank and here i am i have these skills this isn't just a gift although it might be a gift too but you certainly being a body talk practitioner you have skills you have learned them you have practiced them you have studied them so having these healing skills that other people don't have makes me what it means it means i'm what having healing skills means i'm what Just see what pops up. There's no wrong answer. And then we'll just do 30 seconds. Just see what you've, what kind of comes forward. But how could this archetype possibly be holding back your money flow? This idea that what you do might not be understood or welcomed by other people. How How is that showing up in your life? How are you afraid to share yourself? And then let's just, oh, jeez. Okay. Let's pop in the chat real quick. Oh, I see that. <laughs> I see the screen sharing. Um, if you're willing to pop in um, and just share uh, a word or two that's coming up for you of how, how, how this is showing, how is the witch archetype showing up for you? How does it make you feel? Like I will, I will just share because again, that it makes me feel vulnerable. I feel like doing this work that someone else might not be 
on board um, puts me at risk to an extent. Excited, okay. Afraid of ridicule. Uh, oh, both ridicule and object of envy. That is, yeah. Uncomfortable, yeah. So again, let me just say, we're bringing this stuff into the light. We're using awareness here. We're doing consciousness medicine is what we're doing. Um, so I'm going to, of course, you'll get the recording. And when I do the follow-up email, for those of you, unless you're watching it later on the YouTube channel, um, I will include a worksheet that has all these questions So you, and maybe some more. So you can just like take a little more time with this if this is helpful for you. Okay, so that's the witch, because we are on our um our brief presentation here so let's talk about the merchant and i just feel like okay let's talk about capitalism <laughs> for like four seconds like no biggie um there is no way i mean every single person here is definitely influenced by i mean you maybe you've heard the state the phrase late stage capitalism and the first time that i heard it i was like <gasps> and then i'm like oh god yeah I mean, we we are in the stage collectively where we're saying where capitalism doesn't work, where where it's the parts of it that don't work. And if we are kind, gentle, generous, healing type people, we don't want to be harmful. And so um, to ourselves or anyone else. And yet, and yet we are almost certainly influenced by some of these deep ideas. So the merchant is the archetype of the merchant is the it's the business owner the person who's selling something it's the person who gets up at three o'clock in the morning so they can load their wagon and bring it into town and sell their wares and they just bust their butt until they drop dead <laughs> like that's kind of the merchant archetype and there's a lot of th I, the one i chose to sort of focus on here is the idea of well i'm calling it overworking but it's this idea of like effort and just like we have to push and we have to try and we have to struggle and we have to suffer and we have to restrict and we have to deny just to be, to be successful. And, you know, I mean, I, it doesn't take a lot of imagination to see around us how much we get those messages. You know, um, I've worked in the corporate world. God help you if you've ever worked in the corporate world, <laughs> but like, if you don't put in 50 hours a week, they don't think you're even trying, you know? And that's just like, and there's, that's, kind of widespread this um and then we go into our own businesses and it's hard it's like that doesn't just disappear <laughs> we still have it so these ideas of having a successful business and being a successful um practitioner like let's just pop in let's see what pops in your in your mind here so in order to be successful i have to always what i can never what in order to be successful and to be a, a a merchant that makes money, I will I will have to give up what? And then just a little bit of a longer exploration. So how might these ideas of what it takes to be in business, what it takes to make a living, what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur, how could they be getting in the, in the way of running a business that works for you? How could they be getting in the way of allowing money to just flow instead of having to go carry the buckets one at a time? Okay. Again, we're just doing this quick. Um, would anyone be willing to share um, what comes up for you? I, I feel like this one's a little... Um, harder to see just because it's so so like how we function but um all right i will just share for me like one thing i can never do if i'm going to be a good business owner is i can never slow down and breathe okay and katie's good stifling my creativity keeping my head down suffocating my dreams exactly which is like we get into our own practice so we can be creative and have our head up and <laughs> and live our dreams and then we get like, ah, I got to keep going. Anyone want to share anything about, uh, oh yeah, perfect. Ellen, about spending time, yeah, gets in the way of doing, spending time doing the things you love, spending time with the family, because we always have to work. Yeah, I've been overbooking lately myself. I've just been, 
and then I look at my calendar. I'm like, Ooh, look at him, how great I am. Look at all these, look at all these appointments. And then I have to like do them. And I'm like, Oh my God. And that's just, that's, that's capitalist thinking time for other things that we're giving up. Mm -hmm. And so what I will bring to your attention is like, we have a lot of like time and, um, Oh, oh to, yeah. You always have to be a prepared. Right. Exactly. So like what's coming up for people, it seems like is this, um, uh, choosing work over life, the work-life balance thing. And, um, but we are talking about money and I have found myself repeatedly, cause I have been in business for a long time. This is crazy, but it's true. The less hard I work, the more money I make. It, it, I, if I didn't see it happen so many times, I'd be like, well, that does not make sense. <laughs> it is true. The more I'm like, this is how much I can do. The more money I make. It's just like people like I get automatically clients and maybe I raise my rates or I offer a class or I offer a package or whatever, 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 where someone just gives me money or I sell something. I don't know, but stuff just come, like, comes to me when I feel free and fluid. Um, I see the merchant and taking care of my family and overworking there. Mm -hmm. I'm not allowing the merchant to be a good merchant <laughs> or to be a merchant in a business, in my business in a good way. Yeah. Yes. And of course we're talking about the shadows of these archetypes these are really powerful archetypes. Like the witch is the healer. The merchant exchanges it. You know, like <laughs> this is like, we want to be in healthy relationship with these archetypes. They're not going to go away. We want to be healthy with them. So let's look at the third one. And this is the monk. So the monk, um, just another personal anecdote. When I lived in Massachusetts, before I moved, I live in Washington state. Now I have since 98, but, um, when I lived in Massachusetts, I lived in like the hippiest, dippiest little valley. And um, it was just everybody was meditating and the tarot card readings and just everything, everything. Um, but nobody was allowed to have money like that was not acceptable. And we had a little coalition in my I lived in a tiny little town and there was like a, a little sub community of people that deliberately lived under the poverty line. So they would not have to fund the United States government's. Um, military industrial complex, <laughs> which is like, okay, power to you. But that meant that at the time they had to live under $12,000 a year. And that's what the, the this is in the nineties. Uh, but I remember that number. Cause I was like, wow, that, <laughs> that's not a lot. And, but that's the monk archetype. That's the shadow of the monk. Archetype. I want to do good in the world. And therefore I'm not going to pollute it with money. Like I will keep my life pristine and clean and so simple and so austere. And I'll just have my little rice bowl. And that's the shadow of the monk archetype. Monk archetype. And again, like as a practitioner, I can't tell you how many vows of poverty have come up as active memories over the years for people. Because somewhere in your family line, or if you believe in the past life situation, or if you believe in like that you come into the world and you've picked up the karma on your way in as the body talk teaching is, Either way, people are carrying memories in their bodies of promising not to make money. <laughs> and that's really gets in the way when then in this society, in this culture, you want to go do something of value and you don't have any resources to do it. Like the vow of poverty is not appropriate for living in um, the culture that I live in, you know, where we exchange money to function. So let's look at how this shows up for us here. So um, again, the sabotage that I see in a nutshell is undercharging. I'm going to give away everything I have because, it, and it does. When I do my work, I'm not doing the work. I mean, we know this, like there is a little bit of a paradoxical thinking here. I'm not doing the work. I am watching, helping my, I'm watching my body's, my client's body. Remember what work it has to do. And personally, I tap into uh, my higher power and work with that energy too. So I'm not doing the work, but I am showing up. And that is what I charge for. <laughs> charge for my education that they're, that my clients' body minds can tap into. And I charge for my time and space. Um, but boy, I'll tell you, I mean, it, does, it regularly goes across my mind. Like, you got to be kidding me. I'm like asking people for this. Like, I'm not, what am I doing? I'm not doing it. Um, but I am because, and so are you. Because we are hold, we're holding a sacred space. So monk archetype, shadow, is like, how, where are we holding these ideas in the human collective that to be the person that holds the spirit, 
means that we have to like be almost have uh, almost have no needs ourselves. Okay. So having, having these healing skills and I'm putting it this way because all of us do body talk, but we probably do other things too. Many, many body talk practitioners do several things and you may have been around for a long time, or even if you've just discovered body talk, what we're really talking about is that you have healing skills. So having healing skills makes me responsible for what or who, whom. If I want to be a person of service, I should never. If someone can't afford my work, I should what? Okay, and then the just a little bit longer. How is this showing up for you? How is this idea that healing people are holy people and therefore um, are somehow not allowed to 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 thrive with what we do. Or perhaps I wrote it better. How might, how might my ideas about being a person of service be affecting my ability to get paid for my work? I just had a little insight about that. Look at that. My own thing. Okay. And then if you are willing, um, yeah, what's coming up for me is the thing that really pops up for me that I'm constantly like doing my own work around is affordability. This is how this shows up for me is I want, I want everybody to be able to afford what I do. And that's like not real. <laughs> not everybody can afford what I do and, and have me be able to live on what I do. And so personally, I will just say, um, I feel like I should give it away. And indeed, I do. I, I mean, this is something I work with, like constantly, constantly. This is, this is, you're looking at a, a, a this is a growth edge for me. <laughs> I haven't totally um, gotten all the way with this particular one myself. Like I'm constantly getting aware of where my boundary is and I'm often standing on the wrong side of it. <laughs> like, oh God, I just gave too much away uh, because I feel like, oh, well, you know, if you can't, oh, well, I'll find a way. I'll just give it to you. I'll just do a little thing. Da, da, da. Like that's my temptation. And I have gotten better about stopping myself, but it still gets me. Charge less. Mm -hmm. I should be so open-handed with money that I give it all away as it comes to me and I don't accumulate. I give it all away as it comes to me and I don't accumulate anything. Right. That's monk. That's monk right there. Don't accumulate, you know, God forbid you have retirement. If I turn someone away because I can't afford my rate, I'm harming them. Yes. See, again, let me reiterate. These are ideas. These are ideas. Pro bono free sessions. Oh, free sessions are a tithe. Oh, that's so monk. Oh my gosh. That's so monk archetype right there. Yes. I will give my work back to God, which is great if it's within, like if you're supporting yourself. Like the, all of these things are things to just consider. How are they landing for you? It's heaven's obligation that I serve. Ugh. Yes, that's what we're talking about. And um, that can absolutely impact, as you can imagine, your money life. <laughs> when you do this for a living, I, okay, so I'm just gonna like, I, I'm gonna be just gonna tell you how it is for me right now is I just did an audit of my own schedule because I'm really getting tired. I'm getting like, yeah, I was like, okay, this is this is not like when I when I look at my schedule, and I go, oh my god, like that doesn't feel good to me. I don't want to feel like that. I want to feel like, woo, you know, like I love my work, I love what I do, and I have not been feeling that way, and that's because I am overbooked, and I'm overbooked because I feel like because of two things, because I feel like I can't charge people what I really need. To. I'm working through this, okay. So you're looking at a work in progress, but I'm catching myself reverting to like, oh, well, I'll just discount this person and I'll just give it to this person and I'll just trade with this person. And it was like, I, I was doing real well for a while, but it's kind of crept back in and it's taking like a quarter of my sessions have been like, like I'm not really getting paid for. So I'm tired and not having enough money. So that's showing up. And, and I would probably benefit from raising my rates again. It's probably getting on time to raise my rates again because it's been a while. And um, I'm really fighting my feeling myself fight about that for all this same stuff. Well, what if people can't afford it? 
it's like, well, I mean, then they can't, you know, <laughs> there's other people like I do need to support myself and my family. So that's just a reality. And there's only so much time in the day and there's so much, only so much energy in my bucket. And if I don't honor that energy in my bucket and I give it all away as a tithe back to God, which is really, I love that. That's really how I can um, show up when I'm not being really um, respectful of my own self. This is a practice. This is not just a one-time fits all. It's like, I have to practice this when I'm not really honoring myself and my own needs and my own capacity, I wear myself out and then I am no good to anybody. So that is the shadow of the monk archetype. And, and yeah, and it absolutely impacts my money because then not only can I, am I, am I not charging what I need to be, to be sustainable? Um, but then I start to resent people. <laughs> oh, great. Here comes this discount person, you know? <laughs> It's like, well, don't discount that, you know, like that's, that's totally on me, totally on me and my work. So I just feel like sometimes it's helpful to, I hope this is helpful to hear someone be honest about what this might look like, because this is what it looks like for me. So, um, so we have just investigated, uncovered, undug, dug up <laughs> some ideas. I hope this is going to bring to your awareness some of the little the little weird sabotages that we do to ourselves. And we're not doing it on purpose. We're acting out a collective story. And until we turn the light of awareness on it, it is a funky thing. And we know that because we do body talk. <laughs> and this is what we do is we uncover those funky things and bring them into the light so that our systems can process it. So here's our follow-up. So I said, what do we do about it? You know, I thought about doing like a whole meditation. I don't know. I thought about other strategies, but I'm like, we are body talk practitioners. So this is what I'm going to suggest for you. So you just turned over some rocks. Um, I, I I really suggest if you do have a trade partner, um, and I hope you do. I mean, it is good to have uh, some people that you're working with, whether you just trade or you pay each other. Um, it's good to be getting our regular body talk session. So I'm going to assume that you're going to be getting a body talk session sometime soon. And when you do have this in mind, that this is up and kind of, and, um, might be available for your, to show up in your session, some of these stories. So get a session about it. Um, also want to make you aware that, um, uh, both, actually I have the information just on the next slide here too, but um, I and Jessica Miklas are two board members on the Pacific Northwest Body Talk Association. And we both work with businesses through Body Talk. We both work with the energy of businesses and the energy of business owners. So if you want some support specifically around um, supporting your practice, then we have that available to you too. And then for those of you who have done Mindscape, which though, if you haven't taken Mindscape, take Mindscape because it's amazing. And if you have taken Mindscape, I suggest... You go into your workshop, open your elevator and invite in your witch, invite in your merchant, invite in your monk and see how they're, have a talk, have a talk, because that's a great way to work with this stuff. So if that's available to you, and if it's not, take Mindscape, because you will not regret it. it. took me forever to finally take Mindscape. And then I was like, whoa, I should have done this a long time ago. Do that. Um, and again, I, I mentioned that I would have this up here just so you can see it. You guys are 100% welcome on the Facebook page. We have the um, uh, the private Facebook page that's just for our group. We also, or no, I'm sorry. We have the private Facebook group. I always mess these up. Um, to talk about this stuff, if we want to talk about it amongst ourselves, we have the Facebook page. If you want to just like on a more, a little bit more public setting, like put out like, you know, who works with money and businesses and stuff, or I want to, or I do, um, you're welcome to use the Facebook resources. And uh, you're welcome to reach out to anybody that you see on the website. And then Jessica and I also um, work specifically with business and relationships with business and relationships with money. Because frankly, I think that business and practice building, I'm, a, I'm, like, I'm a creative person. And I think it's the most creative, dynamic, spirit building work. Like just growing a practice is a spiritual journey. <laughs> so, so I love to work with it. So um, let me know. My website is there. And um, and then Jessica, is, I've worked with Jessica. She's amazing. She's amazing. So I recommend her too. Um, so that's some ways that you can work with all this stuff. And I will finish off with a thank you. 